Hello, I'm Juan Davis, Chief Creative Officer at KCT and PBS SoCal, and I am joined by the newsroom of KPCC and LAIS on a daily reporter roundup. How is everyone? Great, thanks for having us. And joining us today again is Executive Editor Megan Garvey. Hi, Megan. Hi, Juan. Mike, you've been covering Governor Newsom's COVID news conferences for a while, and today there were some good news. To start with, the state's positivity rate is actually down for once. You know, the seven-day average went down half a percent over the past week. And while hospitalizations and ICU numbers are still rising, that rise is starting to slow down. That's with a record number of tests being done. Also, the CDC announced the guidelines for pool testing, which Newsom says could make even more testing available. Of course, there are still plenty of other issues. Some test results are taking up to two weeks to come back. There are counties where ICU beds are becoming unavailable, and the governor says a national testing strategy is still needed. Uh, we continue to need more support. Uh, we need a national strategy, not just support here in the state. This nation needs more support on testing at a national level. Uh, and we continue uh, to need more support uh, on our efforts to contact, trace, isolate, uh, and quarantine individuals. The governor's main message today, though, was that the next few weeks are a critical time for Californians to wear masks, wash our hands, physically distance, and minimize mixing with other people. Jackie is taking a look at the numbers a little bit closer to home in L.A. County, specifically when it comes to hospitalizations. Yeah, L.A. County broke another record with more than 2,200 people in the county currently hospitalized with COVID-19. That is the highest number of Angelinos hospitalized at one time since the pandemic began. We also got an update on contact tracing. That's when health workers follow up with people who test positive and their contacts to help them safely quarantine. And we found out today that only half of the people who test positive will give their close contacts information to the health workers. We also got an update on pregnant women. We know that they are much more likely to be hospitalized and in the ICU if they get COVID. In LA County, three out of every four pregnant women with COVID are Latina. Overall, Latinos are twice as likely as white people to get COVID in LA County. Kyle has an update on how the pandemic is affecting high school sports this fall. Yeah, Megan, today we learned that there will be no football under the Friday night lights in Southern California or across the state. At least this fall, the uh, fall sports schedule was delayed until December, at least. Uh, it's one of many changes that state athletics officials are making to try and make sure that, you know, a whole bunch of high school athletes don't see their seasons canceled altogether. So what they're doing is essentially packing three seasons worth of sports into just two, into just the winter and the spring. And state athletics officials tried to frame this as good news. They say, you know, this is an opportunity to make sure that kids can still participate. Uh, but they also acknowledge that if the public health situation doesn't improve by maybe late November, or early December, it's still possible that seasons could be shortened or canceled altogether. And finally, John has been keeping a close watch on what I'm thinking of as Hollywood's bleak and bleaker <laughs> summer movie season. Yeah, those kids who will not be playing football are not going to be headed to the movie theaters because what Mike Rose said is you want to minimize mixing with others. And if you haven't noticed, movie theaters are closed and probably will still remain closed for a while. And that means that Warner Brothers today announced that they are postponing yet again the release of Christopher Nolan's film Tenant. They previously had pushed its release twice. Now they didn't even give a new release date for the film. It may open overseas before it opens in the States. And that leaves only Disney's live action version of Mulan as a big studio film that is scheduled to open in August. Now Disney has postponed the release of Mulan twice already. It's set to come out in late August. It doesn't seem likely. Some analysts are now saying that movie theaters will not open until 2021. So if you want to see Mulan, you might have to get a Disney Plus subscription and Tenant. Who knows, it might be headed to HBO. And we're going to have to stay home streaming uh, a little more. Hulu, Peacock, Apple, Netflix, Amazon. Who needs cable anymore? It costs just as much anyway. Hold on, I'm PBS. Oh, Don't yes. Don't forget that. Thank you all at the KPCC and LA's newsroom. And thank you for tuning in. Stay healthy, take care of your family, your neighbor, and we will see you tomorrow. Uh -huh.